time is one more question. Okay. It's a very naive economic question. I'm going to state that start with. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm what, naive economically. What, in your judgment, would have happened given what Obama inherited uh, if the government had said to the AIG and the banks and all that and the people who are making these huge bonuses, uh, you made your bed, now you're going to have to deal with it. Yeah. And so instead of these monstrous, huge bailouts, we're going to create this huge unemployment mm -hmm. fund uh, because what we're saying is that there are some things that are so big we can't let them fail, right. but if you're small, we, we, we can't save you. We yeah. thought <laughs> you don't deserve being saved. So what can you address yeah, that? I, I, I had to reluctantly um, support the bank bailouts. But like uh, during, the, during the, the yeah, well, hang, hang on a second. Okay. Uh, under you know under the, the Bush administration when it first came out, because the the financial the financial system was really teetering on the brink of collapse at that point. That would have hurt everybody. Period. We would have had that kind of you know major dislocation. We didn't. Um, I think the Obama administration was correct in. In, in pursuing and in, in bailing out the banks, where I think they, they made a mistake, and it's coming back to bite them. So they didn't take that, uh, that occasion to tightly regulate the financial industry. That's, that was the price, I think, for the bailouts. And what they did, probably because, again, we have people who are too close to the bank, banking industry in the government, including Obama's government. Um, they have they have allowed the financial system to uh, to bounce back, make big profits at our expense, and uh, line their own pockets. But that that was the perfect time for the government to step in, and as a trade-off for saving them, to regulate them very tightly, keep those kind of things from happening. I agree with what you yeah. said and the way you said it. But what what else Bill said was well, instead of giving the trillion dollars to the banks. What if you set up a trillion dollars and given it to uh, unemployment? Yeah. And giving it to the people instead of the banks. Yeah. Then we might, it, the system might have really corrected itself yeah. a different way. Yeah, and I think that that's... Well, we weren't going to do that. Yeah, well, we weren't going to do that. That's <laughs> right. yeah. And we shouldn't have, you know, if, if, the, if, the, uh, if the regulators had, had been able to regulate that market in the first place, and if the regulators had been uh, doing their job, basically, um, then we wouldn't have had to have that bank bail out in the first place. And it's that, it's that continuous deregulation, that, that deregulatory binge I'm talking about, that's got us into this, this mess. Uh, but if we give them the money back to the people, instead of those dozen banks, mm -hmm. it, it, it might have been a bit, it might have worked better. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think the wider yeah. end is better, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that. About that. And that and yeah. That's, um, that's uh, my question when we get around. You're going to get it. Well, this is a fascinating discussion, David, and I'm really intrigued by your conclusion that, that the long-term solution to this has to be a revival of a sense of common purpose, community, mm -hmm. even citizenship, if we want to yep. use that that's word. Right. How do we achieve that in a society that complains about the timing of the State of the Union <laughs> speech yeah. to, to an extent, right. Right. Uh -huh. you know, it, in conflict with a TV program so that they move the speech right. rather than, you know, take the program? That's a conundrum. Yeah, I think that this is this is one of those this is one of those places where the uh, to, to some extent to some extent our religious communities shape people's opinion and their, their way they behave and so forth. And our religious communities have not been doing their job in getting people to look after the, the wider self interest. Mm -hmm. Partly because, as I've, as I mentioned before, uh, at least in the Christian community, we have a lot of people who are, who are basically preaching a kind of individual salvation, kind of individualism, again, and in many cases aligning themselves with this libertarian economic theory as well. Um, if, I don't know that people who are, who are uh, 
not touched by churches or other religious traditions are going to be very, you know, changed away mm -hmm. from this this kind of uh, you know let's watch the Super Bowl instead of so the State of the Union. Uh, but we certainly have a, an ability to touch those people who are in the pews on Sundays or um, who are in synagogue on a Saturday or who are in the mosque on a Friday. Um, I think that's where the uh, that's where our ministers, our rabbis, our imams can begin to educate people in their social responsibility and in this wider self-interest, which is, I would argue, is, is is deeply embedded in Christian teaching as well as Jewish, Muslim, mm -hmm. Buddhist, Hindu teaching as well, um, and um, so I think it's I think it's largely a a matter of education, okay, and getting people to, to move from that. But as long as, as long as basically all of our um, cultural institutions, including religion, are pushing individualism, I don't see any solution for it. Because individualism is really corrupting us. Okay. In this, in this sense. Um, did you want to get in your first? I did actually. Yeah. There's another aspect of self-interest that, that we haven't discussed yet, and, and that is the question of um, how is um, uh, the corporate world really built? I mean, uh, you're saying, well, there's this idea of individualism, we need to bring to it an idea of connectedness, uh, but there's something else, uh, namely that profit is built on the back of other people, so instead of just having billiard ball, balls who might be connected, we have billiard balls who are stacked up on top of each other, and then the ball on the very top is the one uh, who wins. Now, mm -hmm. that's another sort of connectedness that, that you yeah. can address. And, yeah, and, uh, that's true. If, if you did address it, I wonder if it would solve some of the problems that we've had so far, because first of all, uh, you'd have to argue we are up against a power structure. I mean, mm -hmm. we haven't talked about power yet necessarily mm -hmm. either. We have said, well, some people have their own interests, and we have mm -hmm. our own interests, we'll bring them together. Right. But what if the interests of those at the very top ultimately dominate? And, and it's been said that they dominate the interests of government. Well, we know that. Uh, but where does that leave the rest of yeah. us? Plus, I mean, just yeah. one, one, final, okay. one, one final comment here. Uh, once we, if we saw that, and you restructure the bailout, uh, and, and what you're bailing out at the bottom is not the unemployed necessarily, but the workers. If, if so, uh, then the bailout is not given to the banks at the top, but uh, for the creation of jobs, for actual work at the bottom. Not, not for charity, not for handouts, not for let, let's, let's create a social net, but let's start production the other way around so that actually those who do the labor uh, produce, I mean, th then you'd have a slightly different scenario. Um, okay, here's the problem that I have with the problem that I have, that I have with the sort of um, uh, focusing on capitalist relations per se. Okay, is that we have the conflict between immediate and wider self-interest prior to capitalism. Okay, before before we have um, the capitalist social relations that you're talking about, where you have surplus, certainly extraction of surplus value from uh, from particular people, we're, we're already confronted by this conflict. Jesus is in a pre-capitalist society, and he's already confronting this particular dichotomy with I encounter. So I think we're dealing with something that's even deeper than particular economic systems, a particular economic system like, like capitalism. We're dealing with something that, it, that, that is at the human level, I guess.